Hello everybody, I'm Gloria Copeland and welcome to the Believer's Voice of Victory. Billy Brim's back with us. And boy, has she got some good things. Praise the Lord. Welcome, Billy. Thank you very We're much. We're looking forward to fearless, fearless. The end of days. In the end of days. That means no fear. You believe we're at the end of days? We're at the end of days. Okay, good. I now, the Bible, that. we'll start you out with a chart uh, on TV that you can see. Okay. Uh, when the King James says latter days, mm -hmm. it's really according to the Jews, it's end of days. According okay. to the Hebrew, end of days. All right. So what does that mean? Does that mean the end of time? No. Is time going to end? No. No, it's eternity. Dear God, after. we're just going to begin. John G. Lake, you know, uh, the man that the bubonic plague yeah. germs died in his hands. His daughter was a friend of mine. And uh, John G. Lake said that the Lord told him, whenever you step from this life to the next, you will only just have begun. Amen. You will only That's just have truth. begun. Eternity. Yes. Glory to God. So here we are, and, and the situation is... God made earth. Uh, we'll talk about it later a little bit more in detail. A curse, uh, uh, actually uh, Satan fell and it became Tahuva Bohu. And so uh, even now it's under a curse. And everything, the world, the earth. oh, the whole earth. Everything God made is going to come to perfection. Everything. Earth is going to come to perfection. Mm. He never is on the decrease. He's always on the increase. You think about the little boy's lunch with the loaves and the fishes. Mm -hmm. None of it went to waste. So this earth is not going to waste. We're going to talk about how it got in the shape it's in right now. But uh, it's not going to waste, and he's perfecting it. So here we're coming to the end of days. What are these days? As they show you that chart, when Moses went up to heaven, you know, and he got the pattern for the tabernacle, uh, the Lord showed him, it's recorded in the Talmud, that God worked for six days, had a six-day work week and a seventh day of rest, and that he gave to man, Adam, mm -hmm. a six-day work week, and he'll have a seventh day of rest, and that the um, each day is as a thousand years and a thousand years is as a day. So um, earth is, we'll talk about that later, how old it is, but it has been about 6,000 years since Adam now. And so um, those days we've put up for you uh, on the chart. They can see right on the air. And uh, there are six days, a thousand years a day, a day, a thousand years. They're divided into three parts. Two thousand years, day of chaos. And then the Word came, the Torah. Yeah. And then um, two thousand years of the Torah. And then two thousand years of, of the Messiah. And that's been the church age, the body of Christ. Then at the end of that time, Actually, God was going to see what Adam could do with it. And then at the end of that time comes the Shabbat, the Sabbath, seventh day, the, the day of rest. So we're just about to come to the end of the sixth day. It's been 2,000 years since Jesus has gone. And, and we're about to go into uh, the seventh day. Now, during uh, in, in the meantime, I don't know exactly where it comes, if the seven years is a Shemitah cycle is at the end of the sixth day or the beginning of the seventh, but God does a further cleansing of earth, a cleansing um, of Israel, a cleansing of the nations, the Jews and the nations, and then the churches at the marriage supper of the Hallelujah. Lamb. And then after that starts the seventh day. And that too will be a cleansing, which at the end of it, uh, Satan will let, be let loose a little bit. Fire will come from heaven and all those he's gathered up on earth. So God's, we're coming into times of judgment. That shouldn't scare you. No. Uh, not at all. And especially if you know who you are. That's right. It's very important. Now we're going to talk about living fearless in the end of days. <clears throat> living as an overcomer in the end of days. You're told to overcome. I'm told to overcome. And we're told that we can overcome the devil with the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. There is not one hint in the word of God that the body of Christ is ever to be overcome. Never, 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 never. So we are the overcomers. And we're going to be talking about living and overcoming life in the end of days and fearless. And Gloria, wherever I go, people are afraid. And they're coming up to me, even Christians, because they know I teach about the last days, the end of days. And they say, oh, what do you think is going to happen, you know? And they're in fear. How many times in the Bible, one of the shortest little commandments in yeah. the whole Bible is, fear, fear not. not, fear not, fear not, fear not, fear not. The angel appears, the Lord appears, fear not, Mary, fear not. And so 
never is fear to be a part of the believer's life. That's right. And you don't use that clever of fear to beat Christians over the head. You know, we're not to be afraid. And some of the times, I, I, I think there's a lot of fear mongering going on right now. And uh, we face the future. We know we can see in the word things that are happening and we know our place. But you have to know who you are. Yeah. You must know who you are. And how are you going to find out who you are? The Bible says in 2 Timothy 2.15, study. Study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Well, why are we not afraid? We rightly divide the word of truth. Right. For one thing, we exactly believe right. this word here is That's the truth. Right. We believe this is the truth. Hallelujah. And we get into it. It's the, it's, and it's, the, it's, the, it's, the, it's God talking to me. But you have to know when God's talking to you. And if you don't know what it says. You're lost. I'd be scared too. Yeah, you know, people just get, um, they just get these ideas in their heads. Well, well, what was God it, is. Brother Hagin, you used to tell about scared prayer? Yeah, scared prayer do, does no good. Scared prayer don't work. No, it what doesn't work. Scared what prayer. What was that story? Billy, oh, it was remember? a story about uh, um, an older couple who had had a kind of a change of life baby and they had a farm and they were working out in the fields and uh, a storm was coming <laughs> like a tornado. Mm -hmm. And uh, the old man and the old woman fell down in the cornrows and just started crying, Oh, God, God, God. And the boy, he, he was running toward the house and he said, You better run. Scared prayer don't do any good. Scared prayer don't work. Scared prayer don't work. So, <laughs> of all the things that could stay with me, that one yeah, did. Yeah, scared prayer. Well, it's, it's good, Gloria. It's true. It's good right now. It's you don't true. want to have your, you don't want to be praying scared prayers. No. You want to be standing on the Word of God. You want to be ruling yeah. and reigning. You want to know what's your right, what's your privilege. And so that's what we're going to be talking about. Good, I like Who it. you are, champions. Be a champion, Amen. a champion church. Praise God. So the Bible says that we must rightly divide this word. This word here is the truth. It's the word of truth, but you have to rightly divide it. You cannot lift out a verse and build yourself a doctrine on it. So uh, you rightly divide the word. How do you divide it? You, when you're studying the word of God, you read it in context. When you read a scripture, you know that has, that has to harmonize with other yes, scripture on right. the subject. But you've got to know who's doing the talking and who are they talking to. Who is God talking to in this verse? Who is he talking to in this chapter? Is he talking to the Jews? Is he talking to the Gentiles, the nations? Or is he talking to the church? And if you are in the church, then what he said to the church is about you. That's right. So uh, we are in the end of days and we know that, uh, that Brother Hagin used to say it like this, find out who's doing the talking and find out who they're talking to. All the Bible is for the church, but not all the Bible is about the church. Yeah. Some of the Bible is about other people. The part of the Bible that's about the church and tells you who you are and what you have and where you're going are the New Testament letters. Now, how do we know there are different groups of people? 1 Corinthians 10, 32. I'm telling you folks, I hear a lot of things right now out of the mouths of preachers that come because they don't rightly divide the truth. And they, uh, they don't divide between scriptures written to the Jews and scriptures written to the Gentiles, the nations, and scriptures written to the church. And so they take scriptures written to the Jews and they try to make the church think they're going to go through the tribulation. Yeah. They're going to experience the wrath of God. Oh, my goodness. You better hoard every single thing you can hoard. You better get yourself a hole in the ground. We've been through this before. Wait, I'm trying to remember. Right? Oh, it was in the early charismatic what, days. What, you bought some, didn't you oh, buy you, tribulation you, food? You had to buy tribulation food. <laughs> and, um, and all of this business you had to do. Well, you, you can use some good common sense. In Missouri, we get ice storms. We have mountain roads mm. in the Ozarks. So we can go three weeks without, you know, being able to get out. And we're really glad because nobody can get in and bother us. That's right. <laughs> and we mostly have an entertainment-based society. And so in the wintertime, the shows are closed anyway. So we don't really mind getting snowed in. But so we... I rather we, like it. We, well, I do really like it. <laughs> I build me a fire in the fireplace. 
But, you know, we got some food there just in case. Got some money on hand just in case. But we're not fearful. No. There's a whole different thing in being fearful and being driven and motivated by fear. Now, it is written in one of the New Testament letters, which is to us. God has not given us the, the spirit, spirit of, of fear, fear, but of power and of love yes, and of a sound mind. Glory. If you have to write that on 10,000 index cards and paste it all over your house, especially when you listen to some preachers, you don't want to be having a spirit of fear and you don't let them get a spirit of fear in you. No. In the Old Testament, there were just the Jews and the nations, the Jews and the Gentiles. In the New Testament, there's a third group after Jesus goes to heaven, after he's, risen, after he's been to the cross, after he's defeated Satan, after he's risen and we risen with him. Mm -hmm. Then there's a third group, brand new creations, never existed before. Earth never saw the likes of them. And what's true about that group is what's true about you and it's what's true about the church. Now, if what, you're part of that group. If you're part of that group. If, if you have Jesus accepted the Jesus Lord, the Lord yes. of your life. And I have. And if you have, then something happens to you. You get born from above. Oh, glory to God. Born from above. Oh, it says in John 3, 3, we, we think it says born again and you are born again, but it says born from above. After you accept Jesus as your Lord, he comes into your heart. You're no longer from earth. You're not even an earth creature. It says in Galatians 4, 23, Jerusalem, which is above, is the mother of us all. It says in Philippians 3, 20, that we are citizens of heaven yes, it right does. now. Mm -hmm. It says in um, 1 Corinthians Writing 5. Writing to the church, he said that. Yes, and it says that we are ambassadors on the earth. So whenever you are thinking about your future and you want to know what happens to you, then you go to the New Testament letters yeah. And in, uh, I'm going to read you, the, the tribulation time is called the time of the wrath of God. Revelation 6:16 6, it says, and 17, the great day of his wrath is come. You already in heaven. The church has already gone up in the rapture of the church. You are not here for the great day of his wrath. That is Revelation 6:16 6, and 17. You're not here when they say, let the rocks fall on us. You're not here. That's right. You're in heaven with Jesus. Hallelujah. And it says in Romans, in Revelation 6, 6, 10, 17, the great day of his wrath is coming. Yes, it's coming. There's going to be a cleansing that happens during that seven years. Now, where, what about yourself? The great day of his wrath is in the tribulation time. Romans 5, 8, and 9. Listen to me. Perk your ears up. God commendeth his love toward us. God commended his love toward us. God is not anything as much as he is love. God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Hallelujah. Much more than, much more, being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath to come. The wrath is coming, but we're saved from it. Even when you were a sinner, he died for you. He loved you so much. Now that you're his child, you think he loved you less? You think he loved you, no. putting you down here to be beheaded? No. Now, Billy, I've got a serious question to ask you. Yes, ma'am. Did you actually hear a radio preacher say... I did. You are going through the tribulation and don't let anyone talk you out of it. I did not hear it, but, <laughs> but the guy that picked me up from the plane yesterday and brought me to your house, he was talking about these same, same things, how everybody is in so much fear. And he said, I heard this radio. He said, I heard this radio preacher say... You are going through the tribulation and don't you let anyone talk you out of it. I'm going to tell you which scripture he based it on in a minute. I can't wait to hear it. <laughs> well, I'm telling you right now, I'm giving you the scriptures you are not going through the tribulation. No, we're not. First Thank Thessalonians God. 1, 9 and 10. It says, you turn to God from idols to mm -hmm. serve the living and true God and to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from Hallelujah. the dead, even Jesus who delivered us from the wrath to come. 
in your in the atonement, in your salvation, in what Jesus did on the cross, he delivered you from having to go through the wrath of the tribulation. Praise God. That's, That's right. 1 Thessalonians 1, 9 and 10. Here's 1 Thessalonians 5, 9. Writing to the church. This is a, this says it yeah. right here. God has not, not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. Who's us? The church. We are. Uh, we were appointed. We are appointed to obtain salvation. Glory. We, what a great scripture. We are. We are. You see, you got to know who the us's are, and who the them's are. That's right. Sometimes it says about them, they don't see the light. We're going to read that in a minute or one of these days. But us here is the church, the body of Christ. The letters are to you. Paul and John, they wrote letters. And Peter and James, they wrote letters to you. Yes. So in the letter to you, it says he appointed, he didn't appoint us to wrath. Now, this guy who picked me up yesterday. Now, I've been confronting because people come up to me and they say, aren't you afraid? I mean... Oh, what about this? What about the Shemitah year? What about this and that? Well, I see all of that, but I'm not afraid. And uh, this this preacher that he heard, here's the scripture he based it on. Ready? All right, I guess Matthew so. 24. Matthew here's 24. Here's the scripture he said. It says here that there shall be great tribulation, 21. Matthew 24, 21. There shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no ever shall be, and except those days should be shortened, no flesh would be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Then if any man shall say, Lo, here's the Messiah, don't believe him. Although there's a Messiah, don't believe him. As I told you before, if they say he's out in the desert, don't go there. If they say he's in this room, don't go there. For, verse 27, as the lightning comes out of the east and shines unto the west, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. He's not talking to the church. The church isn't looking for Jesus to come and split the skies with lightning. Oh, no, that's, that's right. That's in the tribulation period. We are met. Thessalonians we tells us. We will be us, at a big party. We when that will happens. be. The, the, the book of Thessalonians tells us, the letter written to Thessalonians, we meet him in the air. He doesn't put his feet down on the earth. That's right. He comes at the beginning of a Shemitah cycle, seven years, and we meet him up in the air and we go with him. Who is he talking to? The people that will be here on the earth, the people that will see him come as lightning. Now, he's talking about this tribulation period. You should get my some of my built syllabuses on the book of uh, Daniel or the book of Revelation. And I show you side by side Matthew 24 and Luke 21 and how that Matthew 24 is all about the Jews. All about the Jews. Now look what it says here during this seven year period. Uh, Matthew 24, 13. He that shall endure to the end shall be saved. Is that how you get saved? Enduring to the end? What if you can't hold out? What if they chop your head off? No. You're not saved by enduring. Enduring is works. This is a works judgment. During the tribulation time, the who want endures to the end shall be saved. Mm -hmm. But that's not you. You are saved by the gospel of grace. Okay, we, so where am I at that time? You're in heaven. Ah, you're in heaven. Right this, and here's how you got into heaven. Acts 20:24. 20, None of these things move me, neither count I myself dear unto God, my life dear so that I might finish my course. I've received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel yes, of the amen. grace of God. What we're coming in on now, we're in the age of grace. We have the gospel of grace. Yeah. But during that seven year time, it's a works thing. They're preaching the kingdom is coming all right. And it is coming. That's good news to them. The earthly kingdom is going to come. But you it, endure to the end, you'll be saved. And then he says, uh, the elect here is the Jews and you're going to see uh, the Messiah. Don't go out to this room. Don't go out to that mm -hmm. desert. They're looking for the Messiah. They never have uh, recognized him uh, before. Yeah. And they're looking for him to come. So during those seven year periods, it's going to be bad. And people are going to be saying, well, he's here. Well, he's here. He said, no, no, he's and not we'll there. We'll be there. We'll be there. But they're not looking. They're looking for him to come Those as made Jesus lightning today. comes out of the east and shines to the west. So shall the coming of the Son of Man be. He'll put his feet down on the ground. That's the coming. We're looking for him in the appearing. After seven years, you know, 
of the time we call the tribulation time. He appears at the first in the air. We go with him to heaven. And then at the end of the seven years, he comes like lightning in the sky yes, and puts his feet down on the Mount of Olives. So this is not at all talking to you. Now this man says, this man says, you're going to go through the tribulation. Don't let anybody talk you out of it. Because if, it, if, 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 if Jesus wouldn't have said it, if he's here, go look for him. And if he's there, don't look for him. And there, don't look for him. He didn't write it to the church. It's too late it to for you. me. I've already been it's talked out of it. It's too late for you. You've been talked out of the wrath. You've been talked out of going through wrath. it. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Mm -hmm. And you can trust God. Amen. No fear. God has not given us a spirit of fear. In fact, fear is a sin to tell you the real truth. God has not given us a spirit of fear. No. But of power and love. In a sound mind. Amen. That's what we're supposed to be demonstrating to the people of the earth right now, Gloria, because they need peace. They are afraid. Yeah. And if they don't know the Lord, they have a right to be. Well, yes, that's right. But, but somebody needs to have a shining face and they need to be walking in faith and in love and they need to be trusting Jesus, trusting the Lord, trusting the Word. I'm all for finding out what's coming, but you face it. Well, you and have you, no fear of it. I have no fear of it. Because the Bible says we're going to be gone at, That's right. when the bad stuff really starts. That's right. Glory the to God. The future is as glorious and as bright as Hallelujah. God can make it. Amen. Now, That's we're good. going to be talking because right now I believe we have, we said, you said faith is the victory that overcomes. It's victory that overcomes. And it's, and it's strength. Yeah. Even the Islamic armies and the Islamic nations, what do they admire? Strength. Mm -hmm. They don't admire a government that tries to appease everything. They admire a government that is strong. So as believers, what God needs right now, He needs strong believers and believers who are not afraid. You know what the basis of that is when you think about it? Based on fear. Fear. If you're strong, your enemy fears you. You're, you're exactly right. If you're strong, the enemy fears you. If you're weak, you fear the enemy. They think that we can take over here. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? It's written in one of, uh, well, uh, David Barron wrote in his book that fear was such a sin for Israel because in whatever they feared, yeah. that whatever it was, uh -huh. in that instance, it was bigger than God. I can see that. They put that up. Yeah, they put that over up. Over God. Actually, yeah. to tell you the real truth, there's a real close kinship between the word fear and worship. What you mm -hmm. fear, you worship in a way. You bow to, down to. Yeah, you bow down to. Yeah. You're supposed to fear God with an awesome, holy, reverential fear. You are not supposed to fear the devil. Uh, we talked yesterday, one of the things that God said over and over and over when he came to people, fear not, fear not, fear mm -hmm. not, fear not. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love and of power and of a sound mind. And I talked to you yesterday about how people uh, are getting afraid. And uh, I'm talking Christians. And uh, my, my grandson, Jared, and I were talking about it in the car the hmm. other day. He went to a camp when he was in high school, um, um, sports camp very much emphasis on sports, but it was also a Christian run camp. And um, they brought in, it was a month long, and all of their teachers and everything, he was really good in football, and so they had D1 school football. Play, and all the, all the teachers at this, at this camp were um, Christians, and they brought in, even though they were sports figures, and they brought in a preacher one night. And all the camp has to go listen to the preacher. It's a big camp. And he preached on end times. I don't know what he preached. But Jared said, he's a high school, big football player. He said, went back to, the, to our camp, uh, you know, our, our barracks or our camp building, you know, where we all stayed. And they cried and cried. These, these high school boys crying and crying over what they heard that preacher say that night. I don't have any idea what the preacher said. But Jared said they stayed up all night long going through the book of Revelation. And they came to the dragon and they got scared of the dragon and they came to this and they got scared of that. And they were crying and fearful. And they said to Jared, aren't you afraid? He said, no, I'm not afraid. My grandma's been talking about this stuff ever since all my life. I heard this. <laughs> This is nothing new. I'm not afraid. This is nothing new. Dear me, we're the overcomers. 
uh, we're with him in heaven, and he knew the right things to say. But uh, yes, some of these things are now, coming. Did we yesterday tell, talk about scared prayer? Scared prayer. We talked about scared tell prayer. Tell it again. It's no me. good. It's no good. Uh, this is tell an, that story. This is an old, uh, old story of Brother Hagin's. You know, we all remember all of his stories. And there was this older man and woman who had had a child later in life. And um, so they were out in the fields and like a storm was coming. You know, I don't know if it's a twister or what, but they saw it coming. And the old man, the old lady, they just went down, began crying, bawling, squalling. God help us, we all going to die right here in the cornfield, you know. And the boy said, run, run, run back to the cellar, you know. And then he said, scared prayer don't do no good. Scared prayer don't work. Scared prayer don't work. So if you're going to be scared, you better go to the cellar. That's right. You, you better, better go, get in the ark, you know. That's right. That's so right. Uh, God has not given us a spirit it's of funny fear. the things that stay with you over the years. Now, scared prayer don't work stayed with you. Yeah. Well, it's a good thing to stay with you right now. That's true. Because you don't want to be a believer in these end of days and you're half scared and all no. your prayers are that's scared. The, that's the opposite of faith. So you couldn't be walking in faith if you were scared. No. So fear is an enemy comes from Satan. It it's gives not, Satan the upper hand. Gives him place. Yeah, that's right. What does it say in Ephesians? Give, the Give no, no place. place to the devil. That's right. Now he's out I here. I believe that. Gloria, we're going to be talking about the devil and demons this week. Okay. But I don't want you to be a skirt. We're not skirt. Because we're over all that. You, you do need to kind of understand how he's working out here yeah. in the realm. Why do people act like they do? Uh, the Bible says that he works down through them. So uh, when we're talking... Well, here's the deal. If you give the devil place, he'll take it. Absolutely. Because he doesn't have any place of his own. And he's so looking he's for a place. To get it your place. He's looking for it. That's right. He's looking for a crack in your armor. Right. He's looking for you to be afraid. That's the number one thing that lets him That's in his fear. That's so vital to be a word person. Vital? That's that means what life comes first. It's what the Bible says, not what the devil says, not what unbelief says, but what did God say about it? What does the word say about this? That's right. You get so, a you get a uh, you get a diagnosis. Well, you've got so and so. We're going to give you five months to live. You better know what the word says about that. You better know, or otherwise your history. That's exactly right. So what we do and what you should do all the time as well as we should do all the time is keep the book open, read it, believe it, act on it, say it. Put it Don't in your mouth. Don't bow your knee to anything else. No. Except what and God know who says. you are. That's know right. that you are the body of Christ. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. God lives inside of you. Overcomer. You're an you overcomer. You are an overcomer. There is in never him. one hint in the Word of God that we are to be overcome. That's right. But we are to overcome. Yeah. I, I begin every day with this prayer. And um, it's in Ephesians. Brother Hagin taught us to do it. I learned about the authority of the believer, as, as did you. And so we pray this prayer every day. Here's how I begin my, my day. I put in detail in my new book how you can pray in the end of days. That's good, Billy. How I start my day. And here's how I do it. I pray this prayer. And we're going to pray it, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17. You make it personal. God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father yes, of glory, yes, yes, yes. give unto me the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of Him. Let the eyes of my understanding be enlightened that I may know. And then it asks for understanding on three things. Number one, what is the hope of His calling? Number two, the riches of the glory of His inheritance in the saints, and then the rest is all about this power. Number three, what is the exceeding greatness of His power mm -hmm. to usward who believe? Oh, that's good, isn't it? According to the working of His mighty power, which He wrought in Christ, the Messiah, the Anointed One, when He raised Him from the dead. Resurrection power. Now, what do us have to do? Us has to believe. We have to believe what is this. That? That's faith. We have to believe that there's a power He wants me to get. There's a power He wants me to understand. That's right. And it's the same power He used when He raised Christ from the dead. Are you going to be running around scared of devils when the power that raised Christ from the dead lives in you? No. And God gave it to you? Bless the Lord. And He wants you to understand it? Glory to God. He wants you to work it? And we have the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 
Glory. So he says, me happy. he wants us to understand what is the exceeding greatness, verse 19, of his power to us who believe, yes. according to the working of his mighty, mighty power, power, which he wrought in the Messiah, the anointed one, when he raised him from the dead, resurrection power, and mm -hmm. set him at his own right hand in the heavenlies. Mighty power. Heavenlies, heavenlies. King James says heavenly places. Greek says heavenlies. There's a place called the heavenlies, and we're going to talk about it. Far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age and world, but also in that which is to come. And he hath put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all to the church, which is his body. Glory. Hallelujah. Far, say far. Far. Above. Far. far above. Not just barely, but far above. He's the above. head. We're the body. You know, Billy, I don't even remember the last time I was scared. Well, that's good. I never, I never, not since you've gotten in the Word, you don't, you don't have fear. It moves it out of you. It does. Because it's the truth and you accept it. That's right. This will move fear this. out of you. You will not think, now, you, when, we get, when we get on down here, you're not going to think the devil's over you. You're no. going to think you are over that's the devil. That's exactly right. Look what it says. He's put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all to the church, which is his yes. body. Amen. The fullness of him which filleth all in all. And you, you the church, you the body, has he quickened. Who were dead. I like made what the alive. He I, made I, us alive. He made us alive. I like what the Amplified says. You were dead, slain by your trespasses and sins. In times past, you walked according to the course of this world, mm -hmm. according to the prince of the power of the air. That would be Satan. The spirit that now works in the children of disobedience, among whom we used to have our lifestyle in time past. Yes, we did. <laughs> we lived in the lust of our flesh. We fulfilled the desires of the flesh and of the mind. We were by nature the children of wrath. We're not the children of wrath anymore. But God, verse 4, Praise who God. is rich in mercy Praise God. for his great love. Could be just for his love. That would be good enough. But no, no, he puts an adjective in front of it. For his great love wherewith he loved us. Hallelujah. Even when we were dead in sins, Christ died for the ungodly. Even when we were dead in sins, he loved us and Even had mercy on us. Even when we weren't worth it. When, no. But now he has quickened us together with Christ, raised us up together, made us alive, raised and us made up. us sit together in the heavenlies in Christ sit Jesus. Together. Hallelujah. When you accept what Jesus did, then you know that when he quickened him and made him alive, he quickened you and made you alive. When he raised him, he raised you. When he seated him at your own, his own right hand, yeah. he seated you in him. We are in him. And there's where you sit. And he's under your feet. Now, that's only true if you've made Jesus the Lord of your life. Yeah, it's available for everybody in the it whole is, world. Right, it is. But, but you're only going to get it in your life active when you accept Jesus as your Lord. That's right. Now, what, uh, uh, we're going to talk about Satan, the demons, demons' possessions, what's going on in this crazy world right now which we have authority over, which is way below our feet. But here's a little clue here. We're going to get to more about Where this. Where are you? We're going to go back to verse 2. In times past, before you were born again, you used to walk according to the course of this world. This world's on a certain course. And that course is a collision course with the righteousness of God. Mm -hmm. And he's going to clean it all up. According to the prince of the power of the air, that's the authorities of the air. Now, we're going to find out later in more detail that this is Satan. In the atmospheric heavens above the earth, Satan's kingdom is set up. And he's the prince over evil spirits, wicked spirits in the heavenlies that operate down through men. And he said... Um, According to the prince of the power of the other spirit that now works in the children of disobedience. People mm. who are not born again. That's right. Satan works through them. Why do they do the crazy things they do? He's working through them. It's not God. Why does a guy just get up one morning and decide, I'm going to go shoot 25 people today? 
Yes. But I don't, Daddy doesn't even know, or whatever the no. deal is. Something that's, came up over that's me. That's where it came from. That's devil. where it yeah. came from. And even on a lesser, maybe they don't go out and murder. Maybe they make laws. Hmm. Maybe they sit in courts and enact laws that are opposite the laws of God. Yes. They're doing that under the influence of the prince of the power of the air. They're not doing it under the influence of God's word. No. And so then all this craziness. Oh, we can't believe that we kill babies. Oh, dear me. Those um, videos. <gasps> I can stand to watch them. But my little Hannah, who's a prayer warrior, she watched them and she said, Mimi, and more in detail than what you see on the news. I, I, have, to, I have to have this for my intercession. And she said, uh, you just can't believe the bar barbaric. We talk about ISIS and ISIL and beheading people. What about millions of little babies that you crush their heads? Torn apart. Tear them all apart. Oh, God, help us. Now, where do you think that came from? Came from the prince of the power of the That's air right. who's now working in the children, children of disobedience. disobedience. Yeah. Now, here we are. We're going on a... Um, we're going to have election year. We're really getting full force right now. It's one year from now. People ask me, what do you think about the candidates? You know, I think about the candidates. We need someone who will inquire of God like David did. We need someone who inquires of the Lord. Yes, amen. And lets the Lord, I believe we're going to get it. And let's the Lord guide them. Because what we're seeing so much is the Babylonian system babbling. Mm -hmm. Babbling on television. Babbling this expert and babbling that expert. And, and this is good for women and this is bad for women. And, and, uh, but what you have to have is, in the, in the um, oh, they absolutely hate the Ten Commandments. They don't want them put up anywhere. And one of them says... We always translate it the way the King James translated, thou shalt not kill. But that's not what the Hebrew says. The Hebrew says, thou shalt not murder. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you have to fight in, for your life and for your freedom, but you don't murder. That's a good point. Isn't and you it? don't murder little babies. And you don't. But, but what has happened now is this, uh, because he's been allowed to, the prince of the power of the air then has increased his uh, activities. Now, you know, really, Billy, when you get when you start thinking about that issue, it's just unreasonable that un Satan's been able to get away with killing babies. Unthinkable. It's just you can't un even grasp that. You cannot, and it has to stop, and it's going to stop, and that's why there is coming this seven-year tribulation period. That's why the wrath of God is going to be poured out. But as we discussed yesterday, it's not for the church. God has not appointed us to wrath. Thank he saved God. us from the wrath to come. And we gave the scriptures Jesus. yesterday. So um, it's really, really important from now on. Uh, I told you about Jared and how he said, I'm not afraid of these things. My grandma's been talking about them for years. He said, I'm glad to live now. I'm glad to live. I thought, I thought about it, what you said when you got born again. You didn't know really all the, no, I didn't know all the proper to words to say. But you said when you realized what you're reading, you said, take my life and do something with it. That's what God wants. Really? I'd never even heard of a woman preacher. No. <laughs> But you see, here's what he wants. He wants some lives now that he can do something with. He wants some lives he'll that will be too. overcomers. You give it to him, he'll take it. Overcomers. Yes, that's right. He wants some people that be walking around that have peace and not fear. He wants some people that are, that are um, Christ is in them. They are the temples of the living God. They have power. I know the greater ones in We there. pray that we have power. There's power to us who believe. And we have to know we're seated with him in the heavenlies far above all that far principality above. and power. And you never, ever, we're going to look at the devil. We're going to look at Satan. I'm not a bit as scared to know. I'm not, because I found that we have to deal with people now who have given Satan a place in their lives. 
sometimes believers, not a place in their spirits, mm -hmm. but in their souls, their, their minds, thinking. their minds, their thinking. They think wrong. Here's the only way to think right. That's the only you have way. to renew your mind with the Word of God. Every mind has to be renewed. Every mind. If you want to walk in every victory mind. in you every know, area. Uh, things now, Gloria, are not political. Here we're having this election. It's not political. It's spiritual. Everything's spiritual. A showdown has come between the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of light. Now, we already know the kingdom of light has already won. We already know that God is going to bring things out for good. But the kingdom of darkness is on its last gasp. Yes, I believe that. And they are, they're fighting for their survival. But the Lord says about them, the accuser of our brethren is cast down. They overcame him by the, the blood, blood of, the, of lamb. the lamb and by the word of their testimony and they love not their lives to the death. I think that can mean, you know, your life to the martyrs, but it, it means what you said. Lord, I give up. I don't want my will. You do with me what you want to do. If you want to make a woman preacher out of me, Although you didn't even know I wouldn't say have it. even had that No, you wouldn't even like have had that. that thought. But you let him do it. I didn't it. know there were any women You let preachers. him do it because you gave him <laughs> your life. Yes, I did. Thank and ever God. since then, Gloria, you have not, you have let your life die in a way. I know you told me that uh, you had plans to finish college and do this and that and this and that. That all kind of died. What happened to that? I can't even remember that <laughs> plan. <laughs> well, it just died out of your life. And then here you come in, here's my life. Do something with it. So what he wants to do with yeah, your life that's right. is make an overcomer out of you. You with overcome it. with the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony to your life in him. And uh, praise God. Bless the Lord. So we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about the enemy of God, but we are going to, we're going to look at it from the idea that we are to be overcomers and that right here on the last, ooh, glory be to God, right here on the last, we're it. We're the ones that he handed the baton to on the last lap of the race. And we're the ones that are going to rise up and be the glorious church, really. Praise God. And the glory, we're going to put on the glory of the Lord. Mm. Hallelujah. People are going wow. to need peace and deliverance. Right now, they're coming for deliverance. Praise God. And they need deliverance. Well, we can help them to the truth of the word that will mm. deliver them. If we need to cast out a devil, we'll know how. And uh, bless the Lord, wherever we go, we're going to give him our life and let Amen. him do something with it. We're not scared of anything. We're not scared. scared. We pray all right. Scared Lots prayer. of prayers, but scared not scared. Prayer don't work. Why would, of all the things Brother Hagin said, why would I remember that so in depth? Probably for this hour. <laughs> and you named this the voice of victory. Yes. And amen. that's what Jesus gave us. He always causes us to triumph. Now, when you talk about the end of day, some people get scared. I know they get scared. I get excited. I get excited. Oh, it's not God. the end of time. No. It's the end of this uh, it's not dispensation. not the end of us. No. And thank God it's going to be the end of some of the things that are going on. Yeah. You know, the end of the Adam's work week, and we're going over into the seventh day and, and then the glorious Hallelujah. eternity in the future. And so some things are coming to um, um, an end, thank God. And uh, things, some things are coming to judgment, thank God. There is a, a tribulation period on the earth when some things are judged. You are not in it. We'll be missing If you that. have given your life to Jesus That's Christ right. and you're born from above then you will be above with him at the marriage supper of the Lamb. But uh, one Thank of the God. things here now as we're coming to this age, I've talked about it before this week, a lot of people are frightened and they're in fear. Are they really? Yep, even church members, I'm oh. sorry to say. Uh, but uh, here we are on the end and we're, we're going to... Now, we established yesterday because it is established in the book of Ephesians that when he quickened Jesus, he quickened the head, he quickened his body. That's right. When he raised his head, he raised his body. That would be us. When he seated him, he seated us in him, and now we are seated at the right hand of the Father, far above all principality, power, might, and dominion, and every name that is named. So when we talk about Satan, we're going to. We're going to talk about this week and next. We're going to talk about Satan, where he came from. We're going to talk about demons, those demons running around mm -hmm. that you have to deal with. 
but you never ever lose the perspective of sitting above. You see, right here in this book of Ephesians, which is my favorite book in the whole Bible, and which would be a good one, it's written to, for, and about the church. Right here in that same uh, chapter, I'm mean, same book of Ephesians, it ends with Ephesians 6, uh, 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Yes. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles or strategies of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this world and spiritual wickedness in high places. We're going to talk about all those different things. So right here, and, and then I love verse 13. Take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all, King James says, that's not what the Greek says. I have a center reference Bible and it says over there, having overcome all. Oh, I like it. Having overcome all, stand. So from your position of having overcome, then you stand. Well, here in the last days, God's got an army. Bless the Lord. He's got those. Now, when you're in the same book where it talks about wrestling against, you're not wrestling against flesh and blood. It's not really the men, the women that you see their flesh and their blood, but it's behind them, the prince of the powers of the air. And in this same book, it tells us, your position over from chapter two. You're seated above them. So when we talk about them, we're going to talk about Satan, his origin and demons and how to deal with them. We're not looking from any other point of view except above. I know Fred Price used to say, keep looking down. <laughs> Instead of keep looking up, keep looking down. Always thinking he overcame them. We've overcome Amen. them by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. But now, a thing to realize that was going on the end, it seems like things are getting crazy, crazier and crazier. Uh, even my young grandchildren are saying, oh my goodness, you know, they're not out of high school that many years. They're saying, whoa, so much worse now than it was when we went. You know, it hadn't been that many years ago. Hmm. So as the end approaches, Satan's fighting for his survival. It says in the book of Revelation that he knows when his time is up. His time is up when Adam's lease is up. He, notice, he knows the day the lease runs out. But he's still fighting for survival. He still thinks he might win because after all, God is depending upon men to have faith in him and, and men are unreliable. So Satan's still thinking that he might win. And so he has come forth now on all fronts, seemingly at once, uh, fighting for his survival. Everything now is spiritual. It's not political. Even as we approach these days before the election of the president of the United States of America, it is not political. It is spiritual because God needs a man yes, who will go or a woman who will go with God's plan and who will uh, inquire of God and be an instrument in the hands of God. Who, someone who gives uh, their life unto God and lets him do with it something. So when you vote, when I vote, uh, we're going to be voting uh, according, as best we can tell, how God wants us Praise to vote. God. Now, all eyes right now are on Israel because things are not political or spiritual. Here's this little bitty land. It's a land of the Bible. Israel is so small right now. It's the size of New Jersey, 60 miles wide. The size of, the size New, of New Jersey, 60 miles wide in its widest point. If you put the bottom of Israel on uh, Los Angeles, the top will not reach to San Francisco. That's how little Israel is, and the whole world is up in arms about Israel. The whole Isn't world. Isn't that amazing? Israel is so small, you can't even write the name of it on the map. you got to write Israel out in the ocean because it's so really? little. Really? I didn't realize that. Yes, but it's, it's, all eyes are on it. Why? Because of Jerusalem. And because of the age to come, Jerusalem is going to be the capital of the whole earth. And because of what God's doing, bringing the Jews back home. So Mama. Satan through the years, he knew what God said about Israel. And so he's always had his plan. He's fighting for survival. If he can just kill all the Jews, then he can stop God's word from coming to pass about them. It ain't going to happen. It ain't going to happen. And he's tried it and tried it over and over and over. Right. We'll just think about Hitler yeah. and the 12th Reich. 
He supposed did to last, best, but it supposed to last a thousand years. He did his worst, I should say. But the Third worked. Reich, the Third Reich, supposed to last a thousand years, and it lasted twelve. And the Jews are still here. They came up out of those still ovens. Still multiplying. They went home. They came up out of the ovens in 1945. In 1948, they got their own land, just like God said. So all that's going on. Mm -hmm. And uh, and we see here, it, it, it's really between two kingdoms. The kingdom of the light and the kingdom of darkness. And the kingdom of darkness is making its last ditch effort to take things over. Now this is a book. And it won't be good enough. And this is a book written by a Jew. And um, looking at the end of days from the Jewish point of view, and figuring out, kind of, kind of looking to uh, the Messiah. When is he coming? Now we, we're going to see that Satan is revealed in his names. That'll come later. He's called the accuser of the brethren. He's called the deceiver. He's called a thief, mm -hmm. a murderer, a liar. Those are accurate. Those are all accurate. We're going to look at those in the Bible. But the Jews have another name for him, uh, Sitra Akra, and Sitra Akra means the other side. You know how Moses, when he went down there and he found them and they built that golden calf? Yeah. And he said to them, he drew a line on the sand and he said, who's on the Lord's side? You come over here. That would be me. Yes, me. I'm on the Lord's side. So there are sides in this thing. And one of them is the side of light. And you get to choose. And you get to choose. Nobody can do it for you? No. But one of their names that they have for him is the Sitra. This is in The Deceiver? In the Sitra? A cross, right down here. Which one? Okay. Yeah, yeah those were not two. It's, it's right down here. The Sitra, a cross. The and other the side. The other side. That's interesting. I've yeah. never heard that before. And so uh, now I'm going to read you from his book. And one of the big things about the end times, I'd say one of the biggest signs, Jesus said it. They said, what's the sign if you're coming to set up the kingdom? And he said, watch the fig tree, Israel. So here's the big thing, God's bringing the Jews home. They're God's time clock. You want to know what time it is in the earth? You see what God's doing with the Jews. So Pickus Whitston, who wrote this book, says, One has to know from the outset that when it comes to regaining and settling Eretz Israel, which means the land of Israel, it's going to be a battle. A spiritual battle, even a physical battle. An actual battle. Mm -hmm. That's what it's all about. When the Antichrist surrounds Jerusalem in, Je in the book of Zechariah, it's about that battle because it's for Jerusalem. Eretz Israel, the land of Israel, represents the key to the final redemption. And of course, he's talking about the redemption of Israel. And as such, it spells the end of the Sitra across existence. And therefore, he... The Sitra, Accra, the other side, will invoke whatever abilities he has to prevent the return of the entire Jewish nation to the borders of the land of their fathers. However, return to her borders we must and by a certain fixed date. So we see in Israel right now, I don't, I don't care if he has to raise up all the Islamic armies. He raises up ISIS. He raises up Iran. He raises up this. But the whole thing is, let's wipe Israel from the face of the earth. Now, when God gets his, of course, he's not going to happen. He's going to get that plan. He's going to get it into effect. But that's going to, um, that right now, there's a battle over it. And um, that plan will be their doom. That plan is their doom. And over here on another, um, it says here in, in this book in another place, the Sitra across very existence depends on holding off the Jews coming home and holding off what God has said would happen. So he does everything he could through the years to foil the plan. He has been successful for thousands of years. And he was able to count uh, Eretz Israel as one of his possessions. The Jews were scattered all over the whole earth. 
Now, his power lies, his main power lie, lay then when he could, um, when he had power on the Temple Mount, hmm. over the Temple Mount and over Israel. If he can keep God from setting up, like Ezekiel said, is going to be set up an earthly millennial temple, then he, he feels he could win. But this man, of course, knows that it's not going to happen. He's always had an exaggerated he's opinion had. of himself. And so he's trying to happen whenever they come up with all these peace plans yeah. and Israel just give a little more land and then we'll be peaceful. No, never work, never, because it is appeasing the Sitra Kra. It is appeasing Satan who is fighting for his very uh, life and fighting to stay here. But we know from the written word of God that he's not going to do it. Who is this enemy? He's the enemy of God and he's the enemy of God's plans and he's the enemy of God's people. The reason why he's your enemy is because he's God's enemy. Now, you have to keep an uppermost in your mind who you are. You're in the third group of people, the church. You're at the right hand uh, of the Father. And I'm going to read you from a few, few books about this. Uh, the first one's going to be the Triumphant Church and um, by Kenneth E. Hagin. Believers are seated with Christ in heavenly places. What page Far, this on? is page one. Okay. Far above all principalities and powers of darkness, no demon can deter the believer who is seated with Christ far above all the works of the enemy. Our seating and reigning with Christ in heavenly places is a position of authority, honor, and triumph. Glory. Not failure, depression, and defeat. Since the church of the Lord Jesus has the triumph and victory over the devil and his cohorts in every encounter, why does it seem... So many believers are subject to Satan and his deceptions. We're going to be dealing with that this week. Whether or not believers are victorious over the devil depends on what view they have of themselves. What do they know about the Word of God? And what do they know about themselves? Yeah. Now, going on down to the next to last paragraph. The triumphant church is the biblical perspective of the body of Christ seated with Christ in heavenly places far above all principalities and powers. The triumphant church scripturally portrays a body of believers who not only know their authority, but exercise their authority Amen. in Christ and therefore reign victoriously in life through Jesus Hallelujah. Christ over Satan, a defeated foe. That's what we're told to do. Romans 5, 17, reign over him. Yes, Amen. In this age, when demon activity is increasing around the world, and folks, that's what I'm here to, here to talk about. It's increasing and people are recognizing it and some of them are getting afraid. In this age, when demon activity is increasing around the world, it is vital that believers know what their redemption in Christ entitles them to. We need to be fully convinced of the authority that is ours because of the victory yeah. Jesus Amen. has already won for us over the power of the enemy. enemy. Kelly, can you remember, I'm sure you do, the days before you knew the power in the name of Jesus and that these things, belong, what belongs to us in Christ Jesus? It was kind of like a hope it's so. sad, wasn't it? It was sad. kind of like a hope so. You yeah. know, a hope. Yeah. Uh, 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 and of course, I, I was born again. I was a believer. But it, I, I didn't have any of this real knowledge of the authority that I had. No, no knowledge no. of the authority. I just hope I can get my little four kids raised here without, you know, any of them dying or some of them this and that, you know. Mm. Uh, not without starving, whatever. Uh, but thank God. Thank God. We need to be fully convinced of the authority that is ours because of right. the victory Jesus has already won for us. It's done. It's a done deal. Over all the power of the enemy. The only way. Now, here's the key. Here's the key. Here's the key. He asked a question up here. Why do some believers still have Satan ruling over them? The only way we can have confidence in our authority over the enemy is to know and walk in the light yeah, that's right. of the written word of God. I can testify to the truth of that. Yes. Amen. Bless the Lord. Now I'm going to read you from another couple of books. This is from the, the Authority of the Believer. Oh, I want everybody to have this book by Macmillan. He writes, The rapidly approaching end of the age is witnessing a tremendous increase in the activity of the powers of darkness. We see it. It's everywhere. So, he says, 
to meet the situation. The church of Christ needs a new conception of prayer. It's prayer all right, but it's a different kind of prayer. The urgent call is for men and women wholly yielded to the Lord whose eyes have been enlightened to see their ministry in the heavenlies. We're going to be talking about the heavenlies. We're going to be talking about Satan operating in the heavenlies, but you're over him in the heavenlies. And you have a ministry in the heavenlies over him. Praise God. He doesn't need to be having high carnival in your life. No. Whose eyes have been enlightened. If you don't tell him what to do, he'll tell you. He'll tell you. The urgent call is for men and women wholly yielded to the Lord whose eyes have been enlightened to see their ministry in the heavenlies to which they have been called. Such believers Mm -hmm. may in union with the great head of the body exercise an authority to which the powers of the air must give place wherever challenged. They don't have a choice. Mm -hmm. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. So so we're going to look at the origins and operations of Satan and his kingdom. And we're going to look at what uh, Macmillan talked about. Uh, Yes, there's an increase in demonic activity. Yes, it's everywhere. Yes, Ephesians 2 tells us there are those whose minds are, uh, Ephesians chapter 2 the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now works in the children of disobedience. Hmm. There are children of disobedience down here on this earth. Some of them are the heads of countries. Yeah. Some of them are sitting on uh, government offices, high authority. But it doesn't matter where they are if the prince of the power of the air, prince of the power of the air, we're going to talk about why he's called that and how he got to be operating in oh, the power of the air. Oh, that would be interesting. He's called the God of this world. He's called the Prince of the Power. Which does not include our us. It's the world system. Yeah. It's a world system. And he's the prince of it. And he's running things. Some people think God's running everything. Uh, Brother Hagin tells a story about he read after one columnist who said, I'm agnostic. He said, there may be a God. I don't know if there is or not. But Christians say he's running everything. And if he is, he sure got things in a mess. And that's because Christians are, uh, they're unaware right. of where he operates, what, uh, he's, what dominion he's had, what realm he's operated in. God is sovereign, all right. But in his sovereignty, we're going to go into detail into this. Good. In his sovereignty, he gave the authority to Adam. And then Adam gave it over to Satan. Adam had authority over his house. Just he like had you authority. have authority over yes. your house. But he didn't use it. He gave it up. We're was, not he delivered it, it to Satan. So since Adam, we're going to, oh, we're going to go, we're going to give his scriptures on That'll this. That'll be good. Uh, since that. Adam, then he, he reigned, death reigned. But then Jesus Christ came. First the word came and then Jesus came. And Jesus Christ has restored authority to the body of Christ. Wow. Hallelujah. I can testify to the fact that the authority in the name of Jesus works. Hallelujah. I go back to the days, you know, when you in debt, couldn't pay your bills didn't know how you were going to make it, bondage. If you got sick, you just put your pajamas on and went to bed instead of rebuking it. That's just no way to live. No. We should live in our in the power of our authority. Fear and came knocking quick at your to door. Take authority. Oh, fear was the one that got me. I used to be so afraid. It was a spirit of fear. I had to have a deliverance. But fear, oh. It's wonderful to be free. What does the scripture say? You'll know the truth and the, the truth, truth will, will make you free. free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless like the Lord. Uh, no, Brother Norval Hayes got caught up to heaven. And the Lord told to Norval Hayes, there are two words that my children should say repeatedly. They're the most important words for them to say after they get born again. Here they are. I'm free. Yep. I'm free. I think so. I'm I think that's free. A, whatever comes up. Whatever. I'm free. Any bondage. I'm free. Because the I'm truth, free. if you know the truth, the truth it's makes in you free. Makes you free. I found that to be absolutely the truth. So tomorrow we're going to talk about Hallelujah. the origins of Satan and his kingdom. This helps people, Billy. I think it will. people that don't know, you remember how we, when we first learned about 
taking authority. Yes, I did. We didn't know how to take authority, no. but we found out we had authority. We began to take we it. We began to. And things began to change. And that we're talking about who we are, yeah. the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, and where we sit at the, only, at the right hand of the Father, our positioning. You have to keep that in mind because now we're going to expose Satan and who he is. Okay. And we're going to talk about the demons and devils and demon possession and what to do about them because it's increasing at the end of the age. And you need to be knowledgeable how to keep uh, rule and victory in your own life and That's to help right. others if they need help. And the name of this series is Living in the Overcoming Life. In the Living end, the yes. Overcoming Life in the Last Days. That's it. Glory to God. Thank God. You know what, Gloria? He didn't say, now, don't worry or fret about anything except in the last days. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> then it'll be so bad you got the trouble. right to worry. No, he didn't say He didn't say, say uh, take no thought saying, what shall I wear? What shall I eat until the last days? That's <laughs> you right, know, and then, then there's going to be a little time when this scripture here won't work. No, 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 no. They're working all the time. Bless Amen. the Lord. Yes. So uh, praise the Lord. That's right. Now we're going we're gonna to talk about Satan and we're going to talk about this. He's the enemy of God and he's the enemy of God's plans. He's in his last ditch effort to stay here. He's, uh, he's going to fight to the he's last defeated, moment. He's already, he's already defeated. defeated. That's he just already enforced done. the victory. Yep. But you know, it says he sees and he knows his time is short. So he knows when it's getting to the end of Adam's lease. He only has authority till Adam's lease runs out because authority was given to Adam. But we're going to be talking about that later. Now, I'm reading to you from one of my favorite authors. Billy Brim. Billy Brim. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I agree with almost everything she says, you know. Uh, <laughs> but I have learned a little bit since I wrote the book. But this book is still one that I read, and it's still a bestseller. Great. People, because it's still uh, applicable to today, the blood and the glory. Yes, yeah, So I, I put in here, why? I, these are questions I used to have. Why did God make the devil anyway? Didn't he know he was going to cause me all this trouble? How old is earth? How long has man lived on it? Is science right? Are the preachers right? You're going to answer all those questions. All those questions we're going to Hallelujah. look at the answers today. Now, we're not dogmatic about some of the things we're teaching, but we are, uh, it's pretty evident, you know. And so um, we're going to begin with the beginning. That's a good place. That's good. Genesis 1, 1. In the beginning. In the beginning. God created the heavens, it's plural in the uh, Hebrew. The heavens, all, every time you see the word heaven in, in, in the Old Testament, it's plural. Okay. And we're going to find out in the New Testament that there's more than one heaven. Yeah. There's heavens. And we're going to see who's in what heavens and where we go from there. But in the beginning, God created all the heavens and all the earth. Only God could sum up so much in so few words. Praise God. For everything the Bible's opening verse includes would fill volumes that the world cannot contain when God created the heavens and the earth. What verse 1 does not include is Genesis 1-2. Genesis 1-2 is another, another, another time. Genesis 1-2, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. Mm -hmm. God did not create the earth without form and void. That state of things upon the earth came later, and it came as a result of something. Now, why am I, I what, what makes me so sure about this, and like we say, we're not dogmatic, but is the meaning of the words without form and void. Without form and void in the Hebrew are tohu, va, bohu. Yeah. Sounds like it rhymes, that. huh? Tohu. T-O-E. T-O-H-U. <laughs> T -O -H -U. Uh, but pronounced like T-O-E. T-O-H-U, tohu. Va. Va, bohu. Bo. Tohu is a word and tells you the state of things. Ooh. Bohu is a word that tells you the state of things. Va is just and in Hebrew. So... The Hebrew words tohu va bohu here is what they need, mean. You can find it in the Hebrew, uh, a Hebrew English lexicon that I like to use. Um, is this where we are? 
No, no, no. Squirrely. I'm reading to you from the blood and the glory, and I don't think oh. you have a copy of it. A Hebrew-English lexicon defines tohu as. Here's the meaning of tohu. Formlessness, confusion, unreality, emptiness, chaos, waste, and bohu means emptiness. Do you think that God created the earth formless, confused, unreal, empty, chaotic wasteland? No, mm -hmm. he did not. Impossible for God to do so. I was teaching this once in uh, Munich, Germany in a Bible school. And uh, there's a German lady there. This has been many years ago. And she said, I know what tohu vabohu means. We used to have a lot of Jews among us when I was growing up. And here's what tohu vabohu means. She said, as you clean all your house, you know how those Germans clean the house. Yeah. You clean all your house in the springtime. You do spring cleaning. And then you've got all the house spick and span. And you remember your teenager's room. And you go and open the door. <laughs> and it is a chaotic mess. And you say, she said, they said it a lot and we said it among them. This place is tohu vabohu. Get in here and clean it up. So that's the meaning of tohu vabohu. It is a mess. It is a chaotic wasteland. So when we see in Genesis 1, 2, and the earth was tohu vabohu, we know that cannot be how God created it because God's work is perfect. The Bible tells us in Deuteronomy 32, 4, and this is at the bottom of page 2 right here, Glow. Okay. Deuteronomy 32, 4, He is the rock. Yeah, his, his work, work is, is perfect. perfect. So Amen. how in the world could he make a um, chaotic wasteland? Couldn't. His work is perfect. Then Psalm 111, verse 3. His work is honorable and glorious. Praise God. Hallelujah. So if his work is perfect and his work is glorious and the earth is a chaotic wasteland with dark, ugly, murky waters on it, you know that he isn't the one that made it to be like that. That's a good point. Hallelujah. How did it get that way? Well, there's another scripture that tells us absolutely for sure God didn't do this, and that's Isaiah 45, 18. Isaiah 45, 18. We're going to find that word tohu again here. If you have a Hebrew lexicon, you can look up the Hebrew word, and it tells you wherever it is in all the Bible, even though it might be translated as something else in... Um, English. Isaiah 45, 18 has that word tohu in it. For thus saith Jehovah that created the heavens, God himself that formed the earth and made it, he hath established it, he created it, not in vain. That word vain is tohu. Mm. He created it not tohu. That tells you right now that Genesis 1-2 is not the state he created it in. He created it not tohu. He formed it to be inhabited. I am Jehovah and there is none else. So we see in Genesis 1-2, we see a place that's tohu. It's a, it's a chaotic wasteland and it's inhabitable. Nobody can live in it. Covered under dark waters. Now, if you have a center reference column in your Bible, not, pe not many people do anymore. It won't be in your electronic Bible. It won't be in your phone. And it won't be in a lot of the Bibles you buy in the bookstores. But I always get, um, you know, I get me a Cambridge Bible or a, and Gloria's got one over there too. And it's got a center reference column. And those center reference columns uh, are really quite helpful. They just tell you where uh, those words are used another time in the Bible. Mm -hmm. And in a good reference Bible, it will say, right there by Genesis 1-2, it will give you Jeremiah 4-23. And Jeremiah 4-23, and I, I typed it out for us, Glow, right I here. I see it. It's in my margin. Is it in yours? Mm -hmm. See? Here's a yep. witness. Yep. Voice of two witnesses. Two Everything witnesses. be established. So they're going to show you where those words are used again. And it's in Jeremiah. She's checking me out. And by the way, that's Well, just I a, have to be careful. That's exactly you know. what you should do. You should check out the preacher's. You don't just believe everything they say and swallow it. You can't believe a lot of so things. So far, you're okay. So far, okay. okay. So she checked me out there, and it, and it came. It was true <laughs> that here is a reference to where tohu vabohu is used again in the Bible. 
and it's Jeremiah 4, 23. Now, Jeremiah is the prophet Jeremiah. And God takes the prophet Jeremiah and he lets him look back in time. God sits at the middle of eternity like a wagon wheel and he can look down any spoke of time. He dwells in eternity. So he lets the prophet look back. I think when we get to heaven, we'll get to look back. And I'd like to see creation. I'd like to see oh, some of those wonderful things. So here he is letting, uh, he's letting Jeremiah the prophet watch when earth became tohu vabohu. And incidentally in Genesis 1-2, and the earth was without form and void, that word was is also translated became. So the earth became without form and void. It was not created without form and void, but it became okay. without form and void. So Jeremiah 4.23, I beheld the earth, prophet Jeremiah, telling you what you saw. And lo, it was without form and void. Tohu vabohu. Jeremiah the prophet is getting to watch the day it became tohu vabohu. God created it beautifully. He created a wonderful creation. And then there came a day when it became tohu vabohu. And God let Jeremiah see that day. I watched, Jeremiah said, and lo, earth became tohu vabohu and the heavens. And they had no light. All light was taken away. I beheld the mountains, and lo, they trembled, and all the hills moved lightly. I beheld, and lo, there was no man, no being, and all the birds of the heavens were fled. I beheld, and lo, the fruitful place was a wilderness, and all the cities thereof were broken down at the presence wow. of Jehovah by his fierce anger. For thus saith Jehovah, the whole land shall be desolate, yet I will not make a full end. So he created a wonderful, beautiful creation, which we call, and many Bible scholars call, the pre-Adamic civilization. This was a civilization that was before, that God yeah. made. He made earth a perfect, beautiful, glorious place. And it went on for I don't know how long as ever long as true science requires. And there came a day then it fell into this chaotic waste. What happened that day? Let's listen and let's just kind of dissect what the prophet Jeremiah saw. I watched the earth, I beheld it, as it became tohu vabohu, mm. and the heavens, and they had no light. No light. Light went out of there. Who is light? God is light. Yeah. God yeah. removed himself from that oh, earth. Wow. Now we're going to find out that when he began to move upon the earth again, the Holy Spirit began to move. The first thing God put back was, let there That's be light. Yes, amen. amen. Now he's talking about, not about the sun, moon, and the stars, but himself. God is light. And on the day when he judged this earth, he removed himself and he didn't have anything to do with it. And it lay there in that wasteful, chaotic state under dark, ugly waters. Isn't that awesome? The light left. And he, as, he, as Jeremiah is watching this, the mountains start to shake. They start to move. The hills. You've ever been to Missouri or someplace else and you can see the strata of the earth, you know, which used to be like parallel to Earth's surface. Now it's tilted up in the air. Hmm. And uh, then you see like there are, are giant cracks in the Earth. There are uh, fault lines in California, quite yeah. a few. Mm -hmm. Even uh, under um, the New Madrid fault line, the one of the worst earthquakes that ever happened happened in Missouri along the New Madrid fault line. And um, then uh, along the Mississippi River. And then there are, there are other fault lines. I know in Oklahoma and other places, there's tremors come. And of course, right down through the very center of Israel is the Assyrio-African uh, Rift. There's a fault line right here near us. There's a fault line here? In, uh, what's that little town out there? Uh, somebody help me out. But under, 
under next Texas. Door to us. In Newark, isn't there Newark. a fault line in Newark? Yeah. So there, there you have it. Now, did God make a fault line next to your house? No. No, he didn't. Did he make the San Andreas fault? Did he make earth? His work is perfect. That's right. A perfect earth doesn't it have fault trophy, lines. Huh? It doesn't have fault lines. No. A perfect earth. But they came, and they came that day. That's the day that it happened, and Jeremiah is a witness to it. He saw all these hills shaking. I beheld, and there was no being, no man left. All the birds were gone, every bird. Now, you know, in this pre-Adamic civilization, you're going to find all the prehistoric things, dinosaurs, dinosaur bones, those great big birds they had, you know, and other ones maybe not so big. They're all gone. Not a one of them is left. Why? The light left. When the light leaves, if the light leaves right this second, glory, if there's no light on earth, no God's mm. light, no sunlight, no light, he said no light, then all of us would be frozen, dead. Mm. And dinosaurs, they all died on the same day. The uh, dinosaur watchers, I've watched them for years. They're rare birds, those dinosaur watchers. And uh, they wear funny hats and funny guys. But anyway, they were finding real... The happened? dinosaurs wore hats? Uh, no, the dinosaur oh. watchers. The <laughs> ones who watch them. Okay. The dinosaur watchers. Where did, what happened that. to the dinosaurs? That's a great big question they had for years and years and years and years. Now they decided that all the dinosaurs died on the same day. And all earth, all the animal life of the prehistoric died on the same day. They admit that. They think a meteor hit it. I don't know what God had to do, but something happened here. Have you ever been in an earthquake? Little ones. I've been in one in Hawaii, and uh, I'd made Ken a cup of tea, and I was handing him the tea, and he went, Did you spill the tea? Yeah, I guess. I don't remember that part. I guess I got my mind off of it, but it was just like that. You know, yes. It just jars you. And why did it happen? Because there's a crack in the earth. Yeah. And did God do it? No. It happened on the day of the, that Let it me became... just say, we got our stuff together and we left Hawaii. And I think you were one of the really quick. last ones to get out, yeah. as I remember. Yeah. He said, I beheld, and, and the fruitful place was a wilderness, and all the cities thereof were broken down. That pre Adamic civilization had cities, and all of them crushed to the ground. While the prophet I, uh, Jeremiah is looking, what broke down everything? What shook everything? The presence of the Lord by His fierce anger. John G. Lake said, the presence of God is as destructive of evil yeah, I as it that. is creative of good. Something so evil that God removed Himself, removed His light, shook down the cities, the hills developed cracks. Mm. His fierce anger did it. The Lord said, all of that earth is going to be desolate, but I'm not going to make a full end of it. So he let it lie there. And it was lying there under the dark waters. And it's lying there. What made that God so angry? The fall of Lucifer. And we're going to talk about Lucifer tomorrow and the fall. Lucifer had been the head over this kingdom. And it was populated not with men. Adam is the first man. It is written that he is the first man. So these were not men who walked on the earth, but all the pre-Adamic creatures that you see and that they find, little heads, little skeletons, whatever they find, they were a part of that pre-Adamic uh, civilization. The dinosaurs were a part of the pre-Adamic civilization. It all ended on a day. And the day that it all ended was the day Lucifer fell. And when Lucifer, who was the head over this kingdom here on the earth, we're going to see that tomorrow. We'll give you the scriptures. If we get to them tomorrow, it might be Monday, but I think tomorrow. We're going to get to the scriptures. We'll show you he had a throne. He had a kingdom. It was here on this earth. He did start out as a devil. He started out as an archangel. Mm -hmm. And he made a devil out of himself. And when he... By his choice. When he... We're going to see that he led a star wars against God. And Jesus said, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from the sky. He led a big rebellion of, his, rebellion, of, his, right. of his creatures. He, he led a big rebellion up against God. But he fell like lightning from the sky. And that's the day the earth became Tohu Vabohu. 
There is this um, pre-Adamic civilization that fell. It's called in the New Testament, the world that then was. But now we're talking about Satan and the origin and operation of demons. Some of the demons, evil spirits that we have to deal with are those disembodied spirits from that pre-Adamic civilization. They don't have bodies and they're demonic. They got here on earth and they're here on earth because Adam let them back in. Yeah. And some of those are, some of the demons that we have to deal with and have authority over are those disembodied spirits. Others, a possibility to hear, no, we're not riding on the dotted line, it's this way and shining in blood. But some of them probably are those and others are the angels, perhaps the higher um, that evil, fell. wicked spirits, the, the, the angels that fell with Lucifer. And so uh, these are demonic presences mm. that have a right to be here because Adam let them back in. But Jesus Christ gave to you a seat far above yes, all of did. them. And, uh, but they, they're operating <clears throat> uh, where they're allowed to operate. They're in the kingdom of darkness. We are translated out of the kingdom Thank of God. darkness into the kingdom of the light, the kingdom of God's dear son, and we have authority over them. And Praise yes, they God. are here making their last ditch effort, but you have to learn your authority. Oh, yeah. And God's counting on you. Your neighbors are counting on you. Your families are counting on you, knowing who you are, what you have, and what you can do about the situation. We're here on the end. Bless the Lord. Praise God, it's a voice of victory. Yes, it is. Because of this word of God that I learned. Thank God. I'd walk in and live in. We're so grateful. Uh, but we've for been it. talking about um, our position in the church. We're seated at the right hand of the Father, overall in Jesus, overall principality, power, might, and dominion. We're over that, and we're looking at what's down here. Gloria, we are in the last days, and Satan has increased his activity. And. Uh, just just uh, right here, uh, one of the camera people, a uh, makeup girl, actually, makeup lady, and she was telling us how an e evil spirit appeared in her room last night, and she knew how to take authority over it. Wow. Well, you know, maybe your little children are there, and maybe they're trying to appear to them, and you need to know, I can take yeah. authority over this mm -hmm. thing. I can stop it. My little children are not going to have nightmares. I'm going to plead the blood of Jesus over this room. I'm taking authority over That's it. This right. is my house, and you're not coming in here, Satan. So uh, these are uh, things we need to know for this last days. That's right. And uh, Peter, um, talking about the pre-Adamic civilization, we're talking about the origin of Satan. He was Lucifer. God created Lucifer, an archangel. He made a devil out of himself. How did that happen? And we talked about the uh, pre-Adamic civilization and when it fell uh, yesterday. You might want to go back in archives and watch these. Now, in 2 Peter, Peter's about to go to heaven. And this is a, this is a real uh, crisis in the church because Peter walked with Jesus. And here Jesus hasn't come back yet. So Peter's telling them that he's going to go on, but all the promises are true. Every promise God made, it wasn't just a fairy tale that Jesus is coming, but there's going to be some time. There's going to be some time. False teachers are going to come. He actually tells them it's going to be 2,000 years. But without going into all of that, uh, Let's pick it up with 2 Peter 3 and verse 3. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lusts. See, we walk in this life. We're going to get next week that we're in the kingdom of light, and we're told to walk in the light. Yes, the season. But the, the people of the kingdom of darkness, they walk after their own lusts. That's right. You can call it what you want to, but it's lust, most of it. Lust after this, lust after that. There will become people in the last days, scoffers. They're laughing. They don't want God in school. They don't want anything about it. They walk after their own lusts, and they don't want you reminding them that it's lust. That's right. And here's what they'll say. Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. Peter says, they're ignorant. But worse than that, they're willingly ignorant. 
For this they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of God the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water Mm -hmm. perished. The world that was. Now he's not talking about Noah's flood. He's talking about the pre-Adamic civilization. Remember Genesis 1-1, God's work is perfect. God's work is glorious. He created a glorious creation. But then by Genesis 1-2, it's all covered with darkness and dark waters. And it's tohu vabohu. So Peter calls that the world that then was. And it perished. And then he says, it overflowed with water and perished. But the heavens and the earth, which are now, that's the one you and I live in, by the same word are kept in store until the day of judgment. Be not ignorant of this one thing. One day is with the Lord is a thousand years. A thousand years is one day. The Lord's not slack concerning his promise. It's still true. It's still coming. And then he speaks of um, verse 13. Nevertheless, we, according to the promise, look for new heavens and a new earth. So there was a world that then was. There's a world that is now. And there's a world that is to come. And the world that then was, was the pre-Adamic civilization. And that civilization was probably in the place of Lucifer's pre-Adamic kingdom. So we're going to start here with um, Ezekiel chapter 28. And we're going to look at uh, Lucifer and the world that then was. Uh, Chapter 28. The Lord, the word of the Lord came again to me saying, Son of man, take unto, say unto the prince of Tyre. Tyre was a big, prosperous, fortified city built on a rock just off Lebanon. And there was this huge city there, Tyre, very prosperous in those days, and uh, God's going to destroy it. And so he begins by talking with, he says to the prophet Ezekiel, You say this to the prince of Tyrus. Thus saith the Lord God, because your heart is lifted up and you have said, I am a God, I sit in the seat of God in the midst of the seas, yet you are a man and not God, though you set your heart as the heart of God. There's a ruler over, um, there's a ruler over Tyre and uh, he's, you know how those Roman emperors were. Now he's not Roman, he's Tyre. He's from Tyre, but they thought they were, they were uh, gods. Yeah. So he thinks he's a God and God said, no, you're not a God. You're just a man. So the Lord gives a word against him. And then he's going to speak to someone else. He tells the prophet to speak to someone else. Verse 11. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me saying, son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyre. Now he's not talking about the prince of Tyre who's a man. Now he's talking about someone else, a king of Tyre. And say unto him, you... Thus saith the Lord God, thou sealest up the sum, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. He's talking now to a king of Tyrus. He talked to the prince of Tyrus, who's down here, a man ruling on the earth. But now he's talking to an evil spirit in the heavenlies. Remember, Satan is the prince of the powers of the air. Remember, he is... um, God of this world. So we see here a double kingdom system. We see an earthly kingdom and we see a heavenly kingdom. In the heavenlies, not heaven itself, but in the heavenlies, in the atmospheric heaven. The Bible speaks of three heavens. This is the mid heaven. And so uh, there, uh, over the atmosphere of the earth, there in the, in the is, is actually, you're going to find out it's Lucifer. When we get down to... Uh, One of the verses down here, it's going to be, you're going to know that it's Lucifer. Turn Satan. And so he says, now, prophet Ezekiel, you speak unto the king of Tyre. And you say unto him, you seal up the sum full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. You have been in Eden. A man hasn't been in Eden. Now he's speaking to Satan. He's speaking to Satan. The prince of Tyre hasn't been in Eden. But this king of Tyre, one he addresses as the king of Tyre, he's been in Eden, the Garden of Eden, the oh. Garden of God. Who was in that garden? Lucifer, as a, disguised as a serpent. 
Every precious stone was your covering. The sardius, topaz, diamond, beryl, onyx, jasper, sapphire, emerald, carbuncle, gold. You mm. wore jewels. Wow. You have been in Eden. You wore jewels. The workmanship of your tablets and of your pipes was prepared in thee in the day thou wast created. This is a created being. He isn't born. He doesn't have a belly button. He didn't have a father and a mother. He's created. And he was created total beauty. He sealed mm. it up. There was no one, no, none of God's creatures, perhaps than the one we call Jesus, our Lord, that was more beautiful than he. He summed up the beauty. Mm. In the day that you were created, in him were these, when he walked, it was like a pipe organ. It was like a music. Music literally came out of him. He probably had something to do with the music and the worship in the area of music. He's very adept at using music. He's very adept well, at using music to, mm -hmm. uh, to, to hypnotize people, to put them in his trances. The workmanship of your tablets and your pipes was prepared in thee in the day you were created. You are the anointed cherub, you the anointed cherub that covered. Some, he was anointed. You have to be anointed with the Holy Spirit. He was anointed and he did something. He's an angel and he somehow covered maybe the presence. Maybe you had to go through him to get to God. And I have set thee so. You were upon the holy mountain of God. He was in the highest heaven, the heaven of heavens. You walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. There is something in heaven and something about God himself and something about the throne that's the stones of fire. And this one had access to that very inner sanctum of God. Mm. He walked up and down in there. You were perfect in your ways from the day you were created. God created him, and God's work is what? Perfect. perfect. So he created a perfect archangel hmm. till iniquity was found in thee. Iniquity was found in him. How did it get in there? Then God speaks about his merchandising. He has to do with that. I will cast thee in the verse of, end of verse 16 as profane out of the mountain of God. I will destroy you, O covering cherub, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. God has the stones of fire still within himself, still at his throne, and he's going to destroy Satan with those fires. He walked up and down in them. But now they're going to be, when, when God has fire fall out of heaven, at the end of the thousand years, it'll come from this, uh, the midst of the stones of fire that Lucifer used to walk up and down in. But now he's going to be destroyed by them. What, what happened that got him to make such a fall? Your heart was lifted up because mm -hmm. of your beauty. Pride. Pride. You have corrupted your wisdom by reason of your brightness. I will cast you to the ground. I will lay you before kings that they may behold you. Mm. Uh, it tells in verse 19 that he has been a terror, but he never will be anymore. Do you, I know you remember this, Billy, mm. that Brother Hagen told about the woman. Yes. That Satan came to her and said, you are a beautiful woman. Yes. You have, I've forgotten what all he said Talent. to Talent, yeah. Yeah, you have this, you have that. You are a beautiful woman. And he saw in this vision, Brother Hagin saw in this vision, he saw the first thing to her head. Satan was talking to her. He was oppressing her. Oppressing her, telling her how beautiful she was and how gorgeous. And then she kept, she kept listening to that until she believed it. She was obsessed. And then. it had a, first it had a black dot in her head. Is yeah. that right? Yeah. And then that black dot moved down to her heart as she began to believe what Satan said and begin to say it herself. Isn't that the way it goes? Yeah, and that was possession. Posse and so the enemy, Satan then, took possession of her, and she became possessed by that devil. 
So when, when it comes to listening to lies of the devil, you better know the word of God. That's your, that's your security. You better know, no, that's not right. I'll not have that. Or if you don't know what the word says, then you don't know what the devil says. You know, that is told in his book, I Believe in Visions. She was a minister's wife. Yeah, that's right. I and she I had sung that. beautifully and uh, operated the gifts of the Spirit. And so she was uh, what, what the scripture would define as a full-grown Yeah, believer. a full-grown believer. Mm -hmm. One who could commit the unpardonable sin. Yeah. You can't commit it unless you're full-grown yeah. and know what you're doing. That's right. And first, here's the difference. We're going to talk about this. Good. Oppression. Mm -hmm. He's out here oppressing you with thoughts. Mm -hmm. Here's where you cast them away. Yeah, that's right. You can still cast them away. No, you don't, Satan. Every thought that comes to you, you didn't think it. I cast you out. I'm not thinking that thought. I bring that thought into captivity to the Word of God. That's the Word of God says so and so. You have if to you know don't the Word. Know the Word. You're just a, a what? You're just a available. Yeah. But but she knew the Word. But she and at first she did. She did. Because he was telling her how beautiful, see, how beautiful Remember you are. Remember what Brother Hagin used to say about the devil? Somebody said, you'd say something good about the devil. Yeah. He said, well, he is a persistent he's, cuss. He's a persistent and cuss. he is. He stayed so, with her. Yeah. So, so first oppression it. and yeah. then obsession. She became obsessed with it. The devil started telling her, you could make it big in the world. Mm -hmm. Your beautiful voice you sing up there on Sunday morning, you know, you can make it big. Lied, lied, lied. And then when it went in her heart, like you said, that's when she became possessed. Yeah. And that's when she chose him. Mm -hmm. Knew what she was doing. Yeah. She chose. Over God. Satan. She chose. So, of course, he's going to tempt people to fall. He loves people to fall. Not well, he wants the thought. He wants the power. Yeah. And, that's and, what he's doing. And really. absolutely, he, he did it himself, you know. So uh, you're not going to... Here's gonna... the thing. Satan was a, is a defeated foe. Defeated. He has no power of his own. That's why he endeavors to, to deceive people like this woman we're talking about so that he can use her power. Yeah, and use her body. Uh-huh. Against yeah. herself He's... and everybody else. Yeah, and cause, cause bad to that church. Yeah. And so what God did with Brother Hagin was he, he, he stopped that devil from working through her to hurt that church and that pastor. Mm -hmm. And God showed him how to do it. Wow. So you, you bought, but, but, but here's the thing about it. You're not going to be committing the, the devil tells more people they've committed blaspheming against the Holy the Ghost. Unpardonable sin. Unpardonable sin. You didn't, you didn't commit it. I doubt any of you qualify. Qualify. <laughs> you got to really, you got to really be a mature believer. Christian. You got to be like Adam. Doing. Yes, and know right. what you're doing. You're, and you're not going to be tricked. You might be deceived, but you're going to know what you're doing. You're going to know it's wrong. You're going to know it's not the thing to do. Exactly. Now let's look at Isaiah chapter 14. Which Remember we're not the question. Gonna do. We're not going to commit. We're going to follow God. It says, "You were perfect in your ways from the day that you were created till iniquity was found in thee." I was once at a university, a Christian university, and a man was giving a doctor so and so was giving a talk in front of all these Christian students. And he said, how that iniquity got in there, we don't know. And I thought, we do too know. God told us how it got in there. So you look at uh, chapter 14 of Isaiah. Here you're going to find out how the iniquity got into them, into Lucifer. Isaiah, it uses his very name, Lucifer. Isaiah chapter 14 says in verse 12, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How did it happen? And here's how it happened. And again, God is addressing him as the king of Babylon. Babylon is present day Iraq. Hmm. And of course, it was Lucifer working down through Babylon and all that mess. So uh, God says he broke his staff. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 5, The Lord hath broken the staff of the wicked. And uh, he's judged Lucifer. And it says in verse 7, The whole earth is at rest. This is Isaiah 14, verse 7. The whole earth is at rest and is quiet. They break forth into singing. This is at the judgment of Lucifer. The earth is happy. It rejoices. Now, God says to Lucifer, verse 9, 
Hell from beneath is moved for thee to mm-hmm. meet thee at thy coming. It stirs up the dead for thee. Satan's not in hell now. We're going to talk about that. He's operating from the heavenlies. That's where the seat of Satan is right now. But he's going to hell. At the end of the thousand year reign, he's going to be put to He's going to be put to the pit at the beginning of the thousand year reigns, but he's going to hell, the lake of fire, at the end of the thousand years. And here, verse 9, hell from beneath is moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming. That's why we know that hell's below. And it's moved to meet Lucifer at his coming. You know how we say that the saints in heaven, they're saying, did you know Brother Hagin's coming? Brother Hagin's coming. Yeah. Well, down there, hell's saying, Lucifer's coming, Lucifer's coming. Hmm. Hell from beneath is moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming. It stirs up the dead for you, all the chief ones of the earth. It hath raised up from their thrones all the kings of the nations. He's always the one that the Bible describes as deceiver of the nations. He went around earth Mm. and he deceived Hitler and he deceived Ivan the Terrible and he deceived uh, Torquemado and the ones from the Spanish Inquisition. He, He deceived kings and all through, and here they are, they went to hell, and here they are seeing him coming. And they say, here's what they'll say, verse 10, all they shall speak and say unto thee, are you also become weak as us? Mm -hmm. Are you become like unto us? Mm -hmm. You promised us everything, we'd sell our soul to the devil. And now here, we have been down here chained in these these compartments, and here you're coming. Then they ask him, the kings. In other words, they're saying, you tricked us. Yeah, you tricked us. Yeah, you did. And they're going to say, how? Verse 12, here's their question, the kings. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground who did weaken the nations? How did it happen? And here's the answer. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will. And he gives five I wills. Mm -hmm. When God created Lucifer, he created him perfectly. And to be created perfectly, you have to have a will. You have to be a free moral agent. Otherwise, you'd just be a Pinocchio mm, yeah. or a robot. So every, everything that God creates, he puts a free will in it, and he put one in Lucifer. And Lucifer was the first one to turn it against God. He said, I will ascend into heaven. He made a decision. Yes, and wherever his throne is, we're going to see that he has a throne, he had to ascend to get up to the heavens. Now, he had back and forth access but his throne was someplace below hmm. earth. That's where it was. Thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne. He had a throne. He was a ruler. It was over the earth, pre adamic civilization. I'm going to exalt my throne above the stars of God. He lived under the stars of God. That's where his throne was. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will sit up there. I'm not going to just be content down here on earth having my throne. I want to sit up there. He's saying, I will be God. I will be God. That's what he said. Yep. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. His throne was below clouds. Earth has clouds. I will be like the Most High. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. Hmm. Then they that see thee will look upon you and say, Is this the one that made the earth to tremble? And shook kingdoms, made the world a wilderness, destroyed cities. Is this the one? Hmm. And then God gives his I will, what he's going to do to him. Now contrast that with Jesus. When Jesus came, he said, I am come to do thy will. Yes, oh God. I seek, oh God, I seek not my will, but the Father's will. So here's the first one, turned his will against God. Mm-hmm. And when he turned his will against God and he said, I'm going to ascend, I'm going to go up, he did. He took his beings that followed him on earth. He took a third of the angels and he made an attack on heaven. We read about it in the book of Revelation. But Jesus tells us how that attack turned out in Luke. um, I think it's chapter 10, verse 18. Yes, Luke 10, 18, Jesus said, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from the sky. Praise and God. that day that he fell from the sky, that's the day that the earth and his kingdom became Tahu Vabohu. And the pre-Adamic civilization was over. Wow. Judged. Ooh, Until God gets ready to create man. Hallelujah. With Adam. That's what happened. That's what happened. 
Billy and I'll be right back. I'm a Christian. I have faith. I don't need to be afraid. Wait, what was that verse? And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. Yes, I have power in the blood of Jesus. I have his authority. I'm strong, full of faith, and can bring God's love and hope to people around me. I am an overcomer. The Overcoming Christian Package is the resource kit you need to be prepared for these times. Unpack the truth, power, and victory with these products. The Power in the Blood of Jesus by Billy Brim. Blood Bought by Shelley Brim Baggett. The Triumphant Church by Kenneth E. Hagan. The Life of Faith by Cornelia Newsom. And Honor the Blood. Order the Overcoming Christian Package for $35.20 on CD and $48.95 on DVD. Go to kcm.org slash TV special or call or write to us today. Position yourself in Jesus so nothing can harm you. You are in this world, but not part of it. Victory is yours. You have the Word of God. You have the power of His name and authority. You are an overcomer because of the blood of Jesus. Apply the power of Jesus' blood to every situation. Order the Overcoming Christian Package today at kcm.org slash TV special or call 800-600-7395. We trust in God and in His Word. Amen. We know what we need to do to be born again. Now, if you, you could have been going to a church all your life and never heard of the plan of salvation. Mm -hmm. But the plan of salvation is that Jesus Himself bore our sicknesses and our diseases, and by His stripes we were healed and made whole. He bore sin, He bore sickness, and each one of us has to receive Him as our Lord and Savior if we want to be delivered and be born again and delivered from the time of evil that will come upon the earth. But those that know Jesus will be caught up. That's called the rapture of the church. Hallelujah. We'll be caught up out of here yes. before that tribulation period starts. Besides that, you're not going today probably and you want to live in power and blessing the blessing comes on you when you make Jesus oh, the Lord of your life. So if you've never, if you don't know a time where you've ever made Jesus Lord and Savior, just say this after us. Father, Father in, the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I receive Jesus, I receive Jesus as, my Lord and my as my Lord and my Savior. Take my life, Take my life and do something with it. And do something Glory with to it. God. In one day I prayed that and I didn't know really anything much about the Word of God, but I said, take my life and do something with it. And I never wanted to be a preacher's wife for one thing. Or a preacher. I thought, or a preacher. <laughs> Good heavens, no, you didn't even think about female preachers. And, you know, I was born again, and then, I, and then the word, Lord got us, and Ken was born again, and the Lord got the Word across our path. We began to find out that we've had a lot of deliverance right here in the earth. Amen before we go to heaven even. Amen. And we begin to walk in the blessing, glory to God. Now, if you if you made Jesus the Lord of your life, that blessing now belongs to you. It's come upon you. It's there for you to receive it. But if you don't know what the Bible says, you don't know, you don't have the faith for it. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word. So we have a free salvation package with a book and brochures. And if you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, you just, and you're ready, in faith, you just say, Jesus, I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Take my life and do something with it. Oh, God can do a lot mm -hmm. with your life. A lot you couldn't do by yourself. So get in a good church. Get in your Bible. Get a Bible. Begin to read it. Study it. Those good words belong to you. Hallelujah. Do you want to get the most out of this teaching? We have you covered. Download your free copy of the easy-to-use study notes for today's broadcast on kcm.org notes. Follow along with key teaching points, scriptures, faith-filled prayers, interactive questions, and more. Use them for your personal Bible study or to share with others. Go to kcm.org notes and download yours now. We're here for you. Today is offering day, and Billy and I want to 
pray over your offering. The scripture says, remember this. He, this is amplified of 2 Corinthians 9, 6. He who sows sparingly and grudgingly and he who, is, and he who sows generously uh, without uh, that blessings may come to someone will also reap generously, but he who sows sparingly and grudgingly will reap sparingly and grudgingly. So when you, when you give your offering, when you bring your tithe to the Lord and you give your offerings, you, you rejoice and you worship the Lord. Uh, you know, you could give without any return. Did you know that? If you give sparingly and grudgingly. So in your personal life, when you're at church and you're praying over your tithes and your offerings, rejoice. That's because right. This, is, this offering is not something that's gone. This offering is in your future because the blessing of it is in that's your future, future. And so if you're having problems with finances and you're, you're not a tither, you're having problems with finances probably if you're not a tither. So what do we do? Well, we begin to tithe. When Ken and I began to tithe, it looked like God and us both couldn't get along with it. You know, there wasn't enough to go around. But things began to turn around for us when we began to give God the first and the best. That's the tithe. You know, I believe, Billy, that tithing is our way to prosperity. Absolutely. More than even giving offerings. That's part of our way, but tithing is like the foundation. That's exactly right. And Ken and I began to tithe, and you know, we just had a little dab to tithe, but that little dab was about all we had. We began to prosper. We're still increasing, lo, these many years later, and God's no respecter of persons. Billy and I pray over your offering Praise right now. Lord. And we receive your blessing. We agree with you that you are blessed as you sow, as you give. It's given back to you again, good measure. Pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give into your bosom. That's what the scripture says. And uh, so, so whenever you sow, whenever you tithe, you get, do scriptures over your, your, uh, your seed. And uh, stand on the word of God and believe God to sow. When Ken and I began to tithe, we thought, we can't get along. All of us can't get along. The Lord and us can't. But you know what? We begin to prosper. Now, the uh, Washington Victory campaign is going on right now. So don't miss any of it anymore. Just the Saturday morning's coming, and we'll be there in healing school. We always have healing school on Saturday, and Jesus always comes. How do I know? People always get healed. So don't miss it. Be there in person, join, or join us on kcm.org if you can't come. This is Gloria and Billy reminding you that Jesus, Jesus is, is Lord. Remember to download your free copy of the study notes at kcm.org notes.